Viruses are the ultimate expression of parasitism. The primary dilemma with viral chemotherapy is the preservation of host cells. As virus tends to hijack host cell machinery following infection, hence it mandates the use of selective chemotherapeutic agents that adversely affect the virus with minimal destruction of host cells. Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites that consist of either double or single-stranded DNA or RNA enclosed in a protein coat called a capsid. Some viruses also possess a lipid envelope that, like the capsid, may contain antigenic glycoproteins. Examples of RNA viruses and the diseases they cause include rubella virus, which causes German measles, rhabdoviruses, which cause rabies, Picona viruses, which cause poliomyelitis, meningitis, colds, and hepatitis A. Arena viruses, which cause meningitis, Lassa fever. Flevi viruses, which cause West Nile meningoencephalitis, yellow fever, and hepatitis C. Orthomyxoviruses, which cause influenza. Paramyxoviruses, which are responsible for measles and mumps. And coronaviruses which cause colds, severe acute respiratory syndrome. One group of RNA viruses that deserves special mention is retroviruses, responsible for diseases such as acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, that is AIDS. We shall discuss that in a separate presentation. Examples of DNA viruses and the disease they cause are pox viruses, which cause smallpox, herpes viruses, which cause chickenpox, shingles, oral and genital herpes, Adenoviruses, which cause conjunctivitis sore throat, hepatinoviruses, which cause hepatitis B, and papilloma viruses, which cause warts. The discovery of novel antiviral inhibitors often is linked to a better understanding of the molecular events in viral replication. So let's take a look at viral replication for DNA and RNA viruses respectively. First, an example of DNA virus, herpes simplex. So let's take a look at the replication of herpes simplex virus. The stages of viral replication can be broadly summarized into attachment, penetration, uncoating, replication, maturation and assembly, and ultimately release of the newly formed virions. The replicative stage differs greatly between species and category of viruses. Viral proteins on the capsid or phospholipid envelope interact with specific receptors on the host cellular surface. This specificity determines the host range or tropism of a virus. So the virus attaches to these receptors in the host cell, following which the stage of penetration occurs. The process of attachment to a specific receptor can induce conformational changes in viral capsid proteins or the lipid envelope that results in the fusion of viral and cellular membranes. Following entry into the host cell, the viral capsid is removed and degraded by viral enzymes or host enzymes, releasing the viral genomic nucleic acid. Thus, the capsid enters the nucleus of the host cell. After the viral genome has been uncoated, transcription or translation of the viral genome is initiated. It is this stage of viral replication that differs greatly between DNA and RNA viruses. The first stage in the viral replication cycle is expression of the viral early genes. Transcription of these genes occurs using cellular RNA polymerase II and cellular transcription factors. These proteins bind to the viral DNA in regions called early promoters or enhancers and promote synthesis of the early pre-mRNAs. A small number of immediate early genes are transcribed. The early RNAs are processed in the nucleus and are then transported to the cytoplasm where they are translated. Once the viral early genes have been expressed and the cells have been induced to enter S phase, viral DNA is replicated. After viral DNA replication has begun, the late genes are transcribed and translated to give rise to late proteins. After de novo synthesis of viral genome and proteins, which can be post-transcriptionally modified, viral proteins are packaged with newly replicated viral genome into new virions that are ready for release from the host cell. This process is referred to as maturation and assembly. 
following which the virion buds from the surface of the host cell and is released via lysis or budding lysis results in the death of an infected host cell and these type of viruses are referred to as cytolytic viruses next talking about an rna virus replication an example being influenza virus influenza virus has heme agglutinin which is a homotrimer that forms spikes on the viral lipid membrane these spikes of heme agglutinin bind to silic acid found on the surface of the host cell's membrane upon binding to the host cell silic acid residues receptor mediated endocytosis occurs and the virus enters the host cell in an endosome the endosome has a low ph of around 5 to 6 which triggers the fusion of the viral and endosomal membranes the m2 protein of influenza virus allows an influx of hydrogen ions into the virion interior which in turn promotes dissociation of the rnp segments and release into the cytoplasm that is the step of uncoating the influenza viral genome is made up of negative sense strands of rna in order for the genome to be transcribed it must first be converted into a positive sense rna to serve as a template for the production of viral rnas replication of the genome does not require primer instead the viral rna dependent rna polymerase initiates rna synthesis internally on viral rna mrna is translated by host ribosomes in the cytoplasm to make viral proteins once synthesis results in a high concentration of nucleoprotein in the cytoplasm viral mrna synthesis stops but synthesis of genomic rna continues this occurs in the late stage of infection and switches the virus from protein synthesis mode into assembly mode in which the synthesized components are assembled into new virus particles the viral proteins are processed and delivered to the exterior of the host cell by rough endoplasmic reticulum and golgi apparatus of the host cell the rnps assemble there and the virus buds from the host cell surface becoming enclosed in the phospholipid envelope containing the viral protein spikes So now we know how DNA and RNA viruses replicate in the host cell. Now let's try to understand the mechanism of action of antiviral agents. Antiviral drugs target virus specific steps and prevent the replication of virus such as inhibitors of viral attachment such as tocicinol which is used in HSV infection, palivizumab used in RSV, enfevertide in HIV. and maraviroc in hiv penetration of the virus into the host cell is prevented by interferon alpha which is used in hpv and hcv infections uncoating of the virus is inhibited by amantadine and rimantadine in influenza nucleic acid synthesis is blocked by acyclovir phoscarnate nrtis and nnrtis DNA polymerase is inhibited by acyclovir and gancyclovir. mRNA is inhibited by ribavirin and fomivirzin. Protease inhibitors used in HIV block the synthesis of late viral proteins and neuraminidase inhibitors block the release of virus from the host cell. We shall look at the mechanism of action of these individual agents in separate presentation this is just an overview at which stage of viral replication these antiviral drugs act to be effective antiviral therapy has to be started in the incubation period that is has to be prophylactic or preemptive a simple biological classification of antiviral agents is wherein the antiviral agents can be broadly classified into anti herpes virus agents which are acyclovir cidofovir famcyclovir foscarnate and idoxyuridine among other agents anti influenza agents like for example amantadine ozetamivir ramantadine and zanamivir anti hepatitis agents acting against hepatitis b such as lamivudine and etifovir acting against hepatitis c interferon alpha and ribavirin and also pegylated interferon alpha and anti retroviral agents which can be broadly classified into 
nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors like xidobutene, didanosine, abacavir and tenofovir, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors such as nevirapine, protease inhibitors like ritonavir, entry of fusion inhibitors such as enfivertide, CCR5 receptor inhibitors such as Marawiroc and integrase inhibitors such as Raltegravir. Experiences from the development of antiviral agents have provided useful general insights with practical implications such as as already discussed viruses are obligate intracellular parasite and they do not have a metabolic machinery of their own they use host enzymes thus viruses are difficult to kill because they live inside the cells and any drug that kills a virus may also kill the host cells Many antiviral drugs are purine or pyrimidine analogs. Many antiviral drugs are prodrugs and they must be phosphorylated by viral or cellular enzymes in order to become active. Effective agents typically have a restricted spectrum of antiviral activity and target a specific viral protein. Antiviral agents inhibit active replication so the viral growth resumes after drug removal. Current antiviral agents do not eliminate non-replicating or latent viruses. Effective host immune response remains essential for the recovery from the viral infection. Single nucleotide changes leading to critical amino acid substitutions in target protein often are sufficient to cause antiviral drug resistance. So this was about DNA and RNA virus replication and the stages where antiviral agents act, the characteristic features of antiviral agents and their classification. We shall discuss about individual antiviral agents in subsequent presentations. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.